Hello everybody, we are back with more Delete After Reading Chapter 3. Some weird stuff happened last time. Let's see what happens as we move forward here. It's beginning to get dark when we reach the Banksy Auction House. Nina suggests we go over the mission report on the ghost detector one last time before we leap into action. Our objective, get the video game back without Destiny finding out. Sneak into the auction house and find the address of whoever bought the video game. Step one, slip past the security guards and find the office belonging to the manager of the auction house. His name is Chris Salt. There, you'll find the information you're looking for. One member of the team must distract the security guards. They then must stand guard outside and warn the others if danger arises. They'll whistle if anything goes wrong. Another member of the group will disguise themselves as the auction house janitor and enter the building using the staff door. Once inside, they'll open a window so the rest of the team can get into the building. They'll then stand guard outside the manager's office. Do you hear that? It's Tomat. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I didn't realize who was speaking. Do you hear that? It's Tomat. He must be distracting the guards. Can we hear that? I can hear him. And now if all goes to plan, Cinco should appear in one, two, three, four, and five. Hey, there's Cinco. Before Nina can finish counting down, Cinco pops his head from behind the door disguised as a janitor. That looks more like a bellhop, in my opinion. Quick hurry, he whispers as he signals to us nervously. Nina and I scramble into the building and duck behind a counter. The manager's office is upstairs. You go ahead, I'll keep watch, Cinco says quietly. Perfect, Nina replies. Remember, whistle if you get into any trouble. Cinco winks at us just before Nina and I turn to run up the stairs, trying to make as little noise as possible. We find the manager's office in no time, but you're kidding. The door is locked. The report said nothing about a locked door. Nina, however, doesn't seem worried. Hold on to me. I'm going to try something. What are you going to do? I ask, intrigued. Nina suddenly pounces on me, and I find myself folding, uh, holding her in my arms. With great concentration, she leans closer and whispers something in my ear. Close your eyes and count to three. Okay. How do I do that? Oh, there we go. Ouch! Hey, Nina, what happened? I look down and instead of Nina in my hand, there's now a key that chirps. Hello! Holy cow, I drop it in shock and it clatters to the floor. Ouch, be careful, you klutz. Is that you, Nina? I ask. My voice is trembling. Of course it's me, Nina replies. Come on, let's not waste any more time. Do you think you can use a key? I place Nina between my fingers and insert her into the lock of the principal's office door, turning her very carefully. Well, that's interesting. And turn. It worked. We're inside the office. While Nina recovers her human form, I take another look at the mission report. Step two, locate the manager's computer. Search the database and find the buyer's name and address. The computer may be hidden inside a locked safe. The password to open it must be in the same room. <laughs> a not so useful tip. If at any point during the mission you have to move a rhino from the Belgian Congo to the city, whatever you do, don't turn it upside down. You'll make the poor thing dizzy. I wonder if that will come up later. <laughs> I don't see why it would, but uh, you never know. We have to find the computer belonging to the manager of the auction house. We split up to scour the office. It's a huge room and the decor is quite over the top, if you ask me. There are paintings on the walls, an aquarium, a coat rack with a hat, a bust, and a large designer table with an answering machine on top. But there's no trace of a computer or a safe. Where could they be? All right, so we can see what's around which I'm sure will come up soon wait I thought that was background music what does it mean I think that's Tomat. I don't know why he left a message. So 
So you can turn into anything? I asked Nina as I rummaged through the drawers of the office desk. Then why don't you turn into the computer we're looking for? Look here, it's not like I have superpowers or anything, Nina replies, making light of her ability. I can turn into just about anything except electronic devices, because then I would get an electric shock. Of course. <laughs> Makes sense, I think to myself. Ghosts have their limitations, too. But come on, that's enough chit-chat. We have to keep looking, says Nina, as she puts a briefcase that was leaning against the desk onto the table. What's inside? A, C, E, and M. With four directions each. Okay. Is this Nina's briefcase? I think she should just open it for me, not make me figure it out. A, C, E, and M. How are we going to open this? We got a C here. I'm sitting on top of the world. Okay. What could those stand for? Let's look for clues. We have a bust. Fish. A meadow crit. A picture of a skull listening to some music with a cola and a Rubik's Cube. And this. Hmm. Nina, you're not going to offer any help with this one? I'm not really sure where to begin with this. What do these what do these stand for? They gotta mean something, otherwise it would just be A B C D, right? A C E M. The answering machine has a C on it. A could be aquarium. M could be mouse. It's like a mouse bust. A C E M. Right? Maybe. But then which direction do they point? Demot says I'm sitting on top of the world. So C might just be up. Right? Maybe. A has three beeps, but I don't know if that means anything. If this is A. There's two pointing to the left and two pointing to the right. anything with them. If this is M, it just has colors on it. E? Oh! Oh! Here we go. I was thinking about it too hard. <laughs> it's on the back of this picture. Up, right, down, left. Okay. Well, there you go. I was trying to deduce too hard. Great, we did it. We're smarter than a dolphin with an internet connection. Well, I don't know about that. I just got lucky. We can hardly contain ourselves as we open the briefcase, but inside, all we find is a piece of paper. That's it? Nothing else? Nope. We have no choice but to keep looking for the safe in the computer. But we've already searched the office from top to bottom, and we haven't found a single thing. We sit on the floor with our backs against the table. We stare at the wall, lost in thought. We go over the report again, just in case we missed something. Strong indications that there are invisible clues. Well, that that's not fair. Of course, why didn't I think of it before, says Nina. She jumps up and grabs the ghost detector out of my hands. It turns out if you press a button, the ghost detector goes into scanner mode. Okay. Aha. Yes, how cool. The light shows things we couldn't see before. Well, well, maybe this office holds a secret or two that were right under our noses. Oh, look at that. Now we can scan any time. Well, let's go back to the top and see what we might find. Scanning. That's cool that it does the entire thing. Okay, let's take another look at all this stuff. Here we go. Line B. Three jellyfish. E equals three. Perhaps you'll find something in the wall. Why would
Why would the sound change just because we're scanning? Look how the red light shines. <laughs> What's that? That was the translation of Taman. It's just the normal animal noises. That's hilarious. Here we go. Ah. Okay, so the paper had a secret grid on it. Skull, jellyfish, and that must be the answering machine light. One, two, or three. Okay. And here's the safe. Okay, so now I think we know how to figure out the combination. Okay. Line B. I'm not sure exactly what that means. There's three jellyfish, and the answering machine beeps. Perhaps you'll find something in the wall. Look how the red light shines. It flashed three times. Let's look how the red light shines. It went three times. Three jellyfish, three blinks. And then the skull says three, right? One. Oh, wait. Line B. One on the front. E equals three on the back. Hmm. DBSR 45. Okay, it just says the same thing there. I thought maybe that was a code as well, but I think it's just the same one. Can't change those anymore. One on the front equals three on the back. One equals three. Is it that one and three are flipped? So instead of three jellyfish, it'd be one. Instead of three blinks, it'd be one blink. And then the skull. Or is it the skull? The skull is one. And then E equals three? I don't know. Skull is one. No? Oh, I see. Aha, it was one, three, three. Okay, so let me look at that again. One skull on the front, three jellyfish, three blinks was the correct answer. Now, the back says, well, first of all, line B, I don't think that came into play yet. And then the back here says E equals three, which might also be for the future. Inside all we find is a piece of paper and a small punched card, the same size as a business card. Okay, hold on, let me back up. <laughs> we found a computer, the decoder 0560. Of course, we find the computer inside the box. Next to the computer, there's a card holder packed with cards belonging to the auction house manager, Chris Salt. You open it and try to turn it on, but you can't seem to find the on button. Wait. Hold on. <laughs> okay. So I think I might have skipped something where we found this Chris Salt card. And then going back, looking in the briefcase again, we found the punched card. But now we got C1. There's a couple different things on here. S9. 6T. Like, which, what is, what is right? R4. Oh, I'm going to write these down. Okay, I think I figured it out. So with the punch card on here, it gives us four clues. R is four, C is one, S is nine, T is six. And then we know from the back of the skeleton picture that E is three. The ID is secret. That's all the same letters, right? So if I punch in secret on here, which would be... Uh, I think I know what it is. Let me do it. Wait, uh, here on the bottom. That's not a screw. That's the button. Ah, here we go. Yep, it's a six letter clue here. Okay. S is nine. E, C, R, 
E T. Secret. Right? Okay, figured that one out. Ghost Detector, P4, Tron, 3S, 3S, Con, 1T, 3S by Simov. Bring the hereafter into the here and now, from zero to 9,999 years. Compatible with all types of ectoplasms. Okay. <laughs> Why did this computer open up an, uh, an advertisement for the Ghost Detector? All-inclusive detection. Thanks to its ultrasonic ether particle scanner, this device can detect ghosts, sprites, time travelers, and all other types of entities. Wondering if you're truly alone? Activate the ghost detector and find out for sure. Crystal clear communication. Hear voices from other dimensions like never before with the most sensitive microphone system on the market. Communicate with the other side with the message manager. Lost language translation package included. Next World Storage. Storage capacity for hundreds of text messages, files, and audios. 256 megabytes of memory to save your memories of the afterlife. Featuring an agenda and calendar up to the year 1984. Interdimensional Discovery. Built-in wide-range infrared light for viewing specters and other ectoplasmic entities in the dark. What's more, thanks to Blacktooth technology, you can now connect to other devices and operate them remotely, and even establish long-range interdimensional connection networks. That sounds pretty good. Infrared Light Beam. See reality through the eyes of a spirit. Use the infrared light beam to reveal what others cannot see. Transcend the hereafter. Help save suffering souls or condemn evil spirits with the Ghost Detector. Join and manage interdimensional missions thanks to its many features. Warning. The ghost detector is equipped with a secret function so you can use it as a door to the afterlife. Activate only in cases of extreme emergency and use with extreme caution. Exclusive offer for living beings available under the counter at grocery stores. <laughs>